What's going on, y'all? It's been a while since I've been behind this camera giving y'all laughter, reality, and all the other stuff that comes along with it. But I'm back. I'm going to tell you why I'm late. The reason why these reviews has been late, like, my my Thursday, my Wednesday, Thursday, Friday videos have been late, is because Saturday and Sunday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday reviews have been late or have not been done at all since the last time I did a review was because of Saturday and Sunday I work, um, Thursday, uh, Revival, um, Friday, church, I've been church all this weekend, I've, it's been a weekend with the dog on Bishops and Apostles, so, it's like, and then I'm trying, and then I have to get this stuff done for church, get these flyers made, I'll have to get ready for pastor wife anniversary, and church anniversary, so, the life of an executive pastor is that way, so that's why I've not been here, popping off, giving you laughter, realness, and reality, because, uh, they boy been busy. Real Housewives of Atlanta season 7, episode 22, season freaking finale. 22 consecutive weeks of Nene Lee, Claudia Jordan, Phaedra Park, Cynthia Bailey, Candy Burry, Portia Williams, non existent, Demetri McKenzie. <laughs> God Almighty, we are free at last. No more Real Housewives Atlanta up that ass. Ow! But anyway, let's get into this episode. This episode, it was cute for what it was. It was giving us a little something, no drama. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I can't take Mama Joyce no more. And I'm going to tell you why I can't take Mama Joyce no more. I can't take Mama Joyce no more. Candy, and I'm going to tell you why I don't rock with Candy like that. Like I used to when she was first on the scene, when she was friends with Kim. She has an audacity. When Nene says something, oh, like on a reunion, they showed the clip, I can't stand your superior spank ass attitude. You can say that to Nene. You can say what you have to say to Kim. But one thing I liked about Kim, Kim held her only Kim and take no bullshit, and Kim had receipts. Kim, Candy was, Kim was one of the one, only person who, Besides Nene, was that Candy couldn't come at, and y'all had her side. Because every time Kim said something, Kim had receipts. When Kim, when she, Candy told my Kim stole her uh baby name, Kim had receipts. So Kim had receipts about the uh the tardy for, tardy for the party song, and she said she paid Candy, and she had receipts. And Candy could not say nothing. Now Candy thought because she was a friend that she was entitled to the money. No baby, friends in business are different. Now if you wanted to be friends. And, but you can see how shady Candy was because Candy released those tracks of how Kim, um, Kim really sounded, and Kim was Candy was the only person who had those tracks because she was pressed about the situation that she wasn't getting what she thought. And and let and the real gag and the real tea of that situation was that Candy thought that that song wasn't gonna go the way it was, and she was mad because she didn't get the percentage of it. Because guess what? When you made out the contract, you did not. That was not in the contract, so. She was entitled to everything she was entitled to, and she had receipts. Now, she had the audacity to say what she had to say, talking about this and that, and saying that I can't stand your superior stank ass attitude, but you continue time after time to have your mother to disrespect your relationship, disrespect you, and disrespect your mad rich. You have the audacity to say something to Nene because you don't like her attitude, and you don't like what she has to say, but you want to cry and be tip for tap with your mom when she continues to disrespect you, spend all your money, and disrespect your marriage. You get mad at Todd and you want to cry when the viewers go in about a certain situation that you should be warm enough to have. We're not saying for you to disrespect your mother. We're not saying for you to curse your mother out, even though I think you need to. But the whole thing is putting your mom in her respectable 
place, and that is being a mom, not being married to Ty, you, and Riley. She disrespects the mom. She disrespects your husband. She disrespects you. She disrespects your marriage. And she disrespected Todd's child. And time after time, you continue to allow her to do that. And I have to commend Todd. I'm going to tell you why. Because if I was married to Candy, I would have cursed her mama out. And I would have cursed uh, Candy out. Because now you're married to me. You're mine now. We, ha we have our own separate family. And the Bible says that you would forsake your family because now that you're married. I just paraphrased it. That, it. that ain't exactly what it says, but that's what it means. So that means, what that scripture means, keep your mama, your daddy, your uncles, your uncles, your aunties, your cousins, everybody out your damn Business. And that's why your marriage is at the state that it is right now. Mama Joy still acting at the dog on fool. The old lady crew still acting at the dog on fool. You can't take the kid. You can't be. You have a whole reality show because your family acting the dog on fool. Now, everybody talking about they ain't watching, you know, like Nene and Kim. Uh, Kim. I'm not, I don't even think I even want to watch no review the ski trip, um, series or spin off because I'm tired of the disrespect and you're still not. Standing up, but time after time, we want to get on TV and cry. I ain't nobody checking for that. I'm sick of it. Because now, it ain't reality. Now you're putting on for the camera. Uh, Todd, and, and it, Raleigh is growing his hair. Somebody, oh, yeah, okay, so you're going to leave your child. Okay, yeah. I would have slapped her ass directly in her mouth. Because when you pull bull crap like that, and your mama already ain't for your man, know your relationship, know your marriage. That gives her ammunition to say what she needs to say. So you're going to keep your mouth closed. You are my child. We are. You're my child. So we're going to move to Los Angeles to be with Todd in his um, situation and my situation as well because they both have business. You're going to move. You know, I don't care what you have to say about it. You are a child. I'm your mother. You don't. You can't treat that child like that's her friend. If I say we're packing up. If we're going to stay in Los Angeles for a couple of months, and we're going to move back down here so you can go to school and handle your situation, then that is what we're going to do. I didn't, ask if, I didn't ask for your opinion. I didn't ask for your input. That is what we're going to do. But that's why Can Candy can't stand up to her damn child. Candy can't uh, obtain her marriage. And Candy can't stand up to her mother and tell her what she's going to do and what needs to be done. I digress. In this episode, we get Nene. Lee is preparing for Broadway. I don't care. What y'all got to say, I'm going to always ride for Nene, but I'm going to always tell her what's right. I don't care what anybody has to say about Nene. Nene used this platform, and the bitch used it well. We went from keep your legs closed to marry man to headlining Broadway. Are you serious? While still obtaining the head honcho queen B peach of this. And the highest paid reality show on Bravo. And the trick. Moving to a 1.2 million. 2.1 million dollar house. In the heifer. Auditioning and getting pilot. Getting businesses. Getting acting roles. And then. Not only that. The, they up to pay another million dollars for her to stay on the show. Because at the end of the day, Bravo, Andy, and those producers, they may be messy. They may shade her a little bit. They even might, they may be put some things out for her to make her look like the bad person because they know it's going to make money and know it's going to sell. But with that being said, at the end of the day, no, shade, no matter how shady producer A and B are and Bravo, Andy are, they know if Nene, they know that Nene Lee is going to continue to have drugs because that bitch is a hustler. They're going to know that once she continues to go her further and further in Hollywood and start winning awards, they go, Nene is going to drop Real Housewives of Atlanta. So what they're going to do, they're going to keep up in her pay so they can make her look, out, look like the bad guy so she can keep walking off and still slay the scene. So Real Housewives of Atlanta and the rest of the bitches can keep, keep their check. Because Claudia Jordan's storyline was going back and forth with Nene. Kenya's storyline was going back and forth with Nene. Um, Cynthia's storyline was going back and forth with Nene. And a foreclosure in business. 
so at the end of the day, for them to keep eating, many has to be the prime factor that everyone has to hate for them to continue to get her check. That's why she can sit on the reunion show and be on. Bother, y'all really are not understanding this. Y'all not understanding what Nini is getting paid for. The reason why Kenya and Nini are still at odds because you like to tune into the reality show to see Nini reap the hell out of Kenya because they both can go at each other and still obtain it. I love, I can love to sit there and look at Kenya try to go for Nini and I can look, I can love to look at Nini to sit at the end of their couch and read the dog hell and go into straight danger zone with Kenya and come out Queen B what, how would you feel if I if they up my check want another million dollars just for me to stay on the social these chicks can still have a storyline you think I'm gonna sit yeah I'm gonna sit my ass right on this couch with my hair laid with my curls falling and my Olivia Pope business outfit looking Snatched, looking good as a as a glamour. I w I would sit my ass right on that couch, go back and forth with K uh, Candy, go back and forth with Kenya, go back and forth with Claudia. Cause at the end of the day, bitch, I have made another million dollars just to sit here and look at y'all talk about me and make me look like a bad person. Because at the end of the day, Nene Leaks is winning. That's why y'all. That's what y'all. That, that's what y'all not understanding. That's why you, people are. That's why people will continue to ride for Nene even in her mess. Because at the end of the day, bitch, I'm winning. Oh, I'm a bad friend. I'm winning. Oh, I'm a bad friend. I'm winning. I have a state superior attitude. I'm winning. Uh, my hair is thirsty, bitch. You're not in my tax bracket. I'm winning. At the end of the day. Bravo would get rid of Candy. Bravo would get rid of Cynthia. Bravo would get rid of Claudia and Kenya. Put a whole cast of new women. Nene Lee would never leave. They will up her pay $3.2 million just to keep her on the show because that's where the ratings lie. That's why Nene Lee will forever win, even in her mess with the state superior attitude. With the walking away, with the shattered edges, whatever. Nene and all her wigs will continue to win. And of course, this is reality show. Of course, Nene's gonna be the person that she is, because that's what y'all pay to watch. That's what y'all pay to see. That's what y'all tune in to see. But Nene is not that way in real life. So, uh, Kenya. I have to, I'm, you know what? I have to give it to Kenya because that was not. Of I will go pay in a theater to see, but that would be something I'll tune in for ABC, maybe BBC, maybe TV One. Something I would tune in because it's laughter, it's funny, and I love Kenya for her producer skills and her production skills. That's why I fell in love with Kenya. I fell out of love with Kenya, and I began to dislike her because she came in the house where I was a lesser and started and did all of this. Just to get a paycheck. That's how thirsty she became to be. And I can't stand thirsty. People know can I stand the people who just try to be too much. I will be here for Kenya. Like I told you in, my, in many of my reviews. I will always be here for Kenya. If she would came on like she did first episode with the coochie crap. I would have been here for that. I would have been here for business side Kenya. Not messy thirsty Kenya. Messy with Apollo. Trying to come for Nini so she can have a storyline. Just like Claudia coming in and trying to come for Nini. It's just like girl. Sit down. You only reason why you survived this season is because we're being introduced to you. So we're gonna see you try to bump heads, try to do this and that. Next season, Claudia Jordan. I better see a storyline. I better see some jobs. I better see some modeling. I better see a storyline to obtain twenty three or twenty four, twenty five or however many Bravo episodes that they pay for and want to be broadcasted. I better see that. I better see something. Demetria. Girl, we already know why you didn't show up to the Real House of Atlanta reunion because you never had a storyline. You do not have any run-ins. You do not. We don't even have questions for you. The viewers don't have any questions for you. Bravo and they don't even have questions for you. So it wouldn't even make sense for you to even get up into a white dress. Bye. Last scene.
that was shown with all the ladies gathering all that situation. I loved it. It was laughter. It was fun. It was pure. And I would love it because I'm sick. I, I get tired. Okay, we watch reality TV for some drama, for some pettiness, for the read, for the shade. Okay, but a lot of times I don't want to see for 22 episodes drama in each episode. I want to see some laughter. I want to see some drink. I want to see some support. I want to see some crying. I want to be. I want to see some uplift. I don't want to see shade, argument, drama, dramatic. Every time I tune in to a reality show, so that's why I was here for it all. So with that being said, congratulations to Nini because they have to know how to keep a job. Okay. Congratulations to Kenya Moore for surviving another season. Uh, and the pilot. Uh, congratulations to Phaedra Park for obtaining being a single mother and obtaining that. And the whole thing with, let me get on Apollo 50 for a quick second. Because it pisses me off when you get in your confessions and you want to shade somebody or you get in your interviews you want to shade talking about, well, they business ain't worth me being in the business anyway because if it wasn't this and that. Okay, you get in your confessions. Cynthia Bailey and Patricia Brown and say that, you know what, their business don't matter that much to me. But if that business did not matter that much to you, why did you get on camera and why did you get at that table and put that girl business out there like you knew that was is what it was? And then if you really did not get a damn about the business, why you spill why is you spilling tea? On a, on a phone call to me, well, I guess we're in their business. Okay, if you don't want to be in their business, if you don't want to be in drama with Phaedra, because she's going to come for you about their business, then stay out of it and keep your messy-ass husband out of people's business. But we already know that you're itching and you're screeching and you're scratching like a crackhead for a storyline. So with that being said, this has been your Season 7, Episode 22, Season Finale of Real Housewives of Atlanta. I will see you next week for a three-part shady drama laughter crime review. Check out my blog at elementsofjderell.com.weebly.com backslash blog. I have my Ralph Lavalina, uh sneak peek of the reunion there. Check out all my social media sites. Follow me, add me. Uh, let me know so I can follow you back immediately. Uh, tweet, share my, face, uh, my videos on all social media sites. And make sure that you go over to my second channel lol it's j Durrell, and subscribe i will have a big video up soon i will be getting ready to prepare for this three-part reunion getting ready for the season four love and hip-hop Atlanta season four episode one video will be next and i will be tuning in i have to get ready for mayfair for um bet nellyville so live chat to be up with celebrities and i will be tuning in and coming back to you with a review for the after party and probably every, I'm going to, um, then we, once we get ready for Yandy's and Medici's live with be VH1, I will come back to the review talking about that. So with that being said, like, comment, subscribe, share, and tweet. And hit your boy up. Let me know your thoughts on this entire season. What cast may she like? What cast may she be dropped? Who she be added? And what she, are you going to expect for this three-part reunion? Like, comment, subscribe, leave thoughts down below. Follow me on all social media sites. This has been your boy, Jay Darrell of Preach Boy TV. See you soon.